Okay. And I'm going to share my screen. Um, so I do a lot of survey work. And all right, can you all see my desktop? Yes. Thumbs up. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to start actually with my R Studio talk that just happened back in January <laughs> because um, our studio has an annual conference every year in January and uh, they, they do these little lightning talks. So I pitched a five minute lightning talk on this platform called Former. And it's a pretty like good quick overview of the whole thing, like what it is and how it mostly works. So I figured why not just show that because that's the big picture overview. And then afterwards I can go into a little bit of detail with some of the, like some examples. Um, so I'll just play that. And I want to make sure that you can hear um, my audio. So hold on. I think I have to undo the share for this to work. I have to say share and then share sound there. So that should go. So I'm going to start it and then hit play. And give me a thumbs up if you can hear this sound. OK. Hi, I'm John Helveston, and thanks for tuning into my lightning talk on how to make R-powered surveys with Former. If you're someone who has ever had to make a survey, chances are you've probably used something like SurveyMonkey or Google Forms, and these platforms work great for simple surveys. But what if you needed to make something that was a little more complex than what these platforms offer? Well, thankfully, some really clever people made Former, which uses R and R markdown code to create rich, complex surveys. Now, just to be clear, I'm not one of those clever people. Former was actually developed by Ruben Arslan and Cyril Tata. I'm just a former superfan, and I made this talk to share it with the rest of the R community and to demonstrate some of the cool things that you can do with it. So what can Former do? Well, I kind of think of it like SurveyMonkey plus R Markdown. You can use it to create simple surveys, but you can also use R code to generate a much richer set of features. For example, you could create interactive charts that survey respondents could then experience while taking the survey. Or you could use R code to generate dynamic feedback. For example, images like this were generated with ggplot code for each respondent in a longitudinal study, showing them their risk preferences for different activities based on their answers to previous questions. So at this point, you might be wondering how all this works. So let's dig into some of the details. Surveys in Former are built using open source components. The text and code for each survey are input using Google Sheets. And once the survey is live, our code is computed using OpenCPU. This makes it really easy to make your work as transparent as you'd like. So here's an example Google Sheet. Each row is an item that will be displayed on the survey, and each column controls what will be shown. The label column is where you insert markdown or code chunks that you want to display in the survey. The type column is where you set the type of each question to show. You can choose from a long list of options like multiple choice questions, text entry, or simply just display some text or images. Depending on the type of question, you may also have some options for respondents that you want them to choose from, like in a multiple choice question. And you can also customize the look and feel with some styling options. It's kind of analogous to an R Markdown document where the style and question type columns are sort of like the YAML and the label and choice columns contain the content that you want to display. Once you've got your spreadsheet ready, you can then log into former.org, input the link to your Google Sheet, and former will convert it into a survey. The example I just showed generates a survey with some multiple choice questions about apples that look like this in a web browser. Once your survey is live, you can then use the associated former package to go import results in a nicely formatted data frame directly into R. Now that we know a little bit about how former works, I'd like to show a couple examples of how I've used it uh, in my own work. And I'll start with an example of showing people randomized images in a research method known as conjoint analysis. In conjoint surveys, you ask people to choose from randomized profiles of different products. You can then use that choice data to estimate their preferences or attributes of those products. So for example, if I wanted to know how people felt about the price or freshness of different apples, I could ask them to choose from profiles like this. And then in each choice question, I'll randomly vary the values that I'm showing them. 
And because I'm working in R, I can predefine all those profiles in a data frame. So in this example, the three profiles shown are generated from the first three rows of this data frame. I've also used Former to create timed randomized quizzes for my class. I do this by creating a A and B version of every question on a quiz. Then I use the sample function to randomly select a version for each question. In this example, you might be asked what's your favorite animal or what's your favorite color, depending on which question is selected. With just a five question quiz, I can generate 32 unique combinations of quizzes. And in this particular example, I've also added a timer so that the quiz will automatically submit when the time is up. So that's just a few examples of how I've used Former, but I encourage you to check out former.org to see some of the other complex designs that you might wanna make, like longitudinal or diary studies with automated email and text messaging reminders. Today, over a million people have filled out a survey on Former. And there's a growing user base with a very active support group. So you'll have all the help you need to build whatever survey you want. So head on over to former.org and start making some R powered surveys. All right, <laughs> so that's my five minute quick talk um, that I did for this uh, conference just not long ago. Um, so hopefully you get the gist of what this whole platform is. Um, and I wanna basically just go over some of those examples that I highlighted in my video so we can see a bit more in the weeds of like how this works. Um, so former, when you go to former.org, looks like this, you log in, you go to your admin page and you can create a bunch of different surveys. And so I have a lot of surveys I've built. Most of these were like pilots and things that were um, just demoing stuff, but I actually have a current survey running live right now, collecting data. Um, but I'll start with one of these. Let's say um, the random images demo. This is the one that showed different random images of apples. So your dashboard kind of looks like this, um, but I've already uploaded the Google page to this. So there's a convenient little button here. It says open Google Sheet. So this is actually the Google Sheet that has it controls everything that you're going to see in the survey. And it takes a little getting used to, I think. Um, if you've ever made a survey in like a common platform like uh, Qualtrics or SurveyMonkey, um, they tend to be very interactive. So, you know, you just like say add add question type and, it, and there's like a drop down menu. Which type do you want? Do you want a multiple choice or do you want to fill in the blank and that kind of stuff? This one is a lot more bare bones. So you have to build like everything you want. Um, but the general way this is built is it just flows from top down. So every row is a new thing that's going to be computed in sequence. So sometimes it's just computing stuff. You might want to, um, so like over here on the right side, there's all these things called calculate. So all these are doing is just storing some information. So if you go far to the right, Here's a little bit of R code in this value column that's grabbing stuff for me. So the first thing it's doing is it's telling me what, what ID are you? Which person are you when you arrive at this page? Um, this was something I had to find from their documentation, but there's an internal little package and you can grab the number of which person has now arrived at your survey. I'm gonna show you some images which are hosted here. So I'm just defining this object called image root, which just stores this URL. If I go to this um, page, you'll see, uh, oh, it's not there. <laughs> I think I must have uh, taken this down. Maybe it's not going to work. Um, and so anyway, I, I have a few different things I'm, I'm defining up top. Uh, the main probably thing for this particular survey is I'm randomly sampling images. So I have four different Apple images. And all these things are going to do is just um, pick an Apple. Is it Fuji, Gala, Honeycrisp, whatever. So those are calculating columns. And then I begin my actual survey content. So I'm going to put some information up that says, hey, welcome to our survey. That's a note. Um, I'm going to ask you if you like fruit. So this is a multiple choice question. So there's a type is called MC button. So it's like a little big button that you're going to see yes, kind of, or no. And those are my choices right here. All right, so after you look at it for a while, you start to get the feel of how things work. Um, and I'm going to show this in the survey now so you can kind of get it in real time with what you what you see. 
All right, so my first few rows here, you didn't see any of these. These were just done in the background because they were all calculating some quick information. I'm going to use that all later in the survey. First thing you see is welcome to our survey and this question, do you like fruit, all right? So here it is. Welcome to our survey and do you like fruit? Yes, kind of, no. Um, so that's what MC button looks like. It's a, it's sort of a button that you're clicking and I can change any of my choices. Um, I don't know why no is all the way over here on choice five, but I could, I could change another choice like hooray for whatever reason. Um, then I can go back in and import my, import my document. So I'm just going to update it. Um, this is going to overwrite this, but please do this without breaking. Yep, now it's overwritten. So if I test it again, now you're going to see that another choice. Uh, yeah, hooray is there. All right, so it's very um, bare bones. There isn't a whole lot of like templated stuff. Um, and, and this is how I tend to do things is I, I do it interactively. I like I write a question and then I go over and upload it and check that, yes, making sure that this, this is popping up correctly. Um, and then I have a thing called uh, submit, which just is this page right here. So I have next page and I could change this to whatever I wanted. I could say, you know, go to next page and then that text will show up inside this button. Um, so you'll see, I have a lot of next pages. You know, the next page I'm going to do this. And the next page I'm going to do this, um, and that's all. This all this survey is doing is randomly showing me my images of apples. So let's just see what one of those looks like. Um, here you go. What type of apple do you think this is? So this is uh, this page. Or here's the question: What type of apple do you think this is? And here's the options: Fuji, Gala, right? Those are my my buttons that I'm seeing right here. Um, but where did this image come from? Well, this is the first time we're seeing our code. So, so far up until now, it's been just a spreadsheet with text. Um, but now we're actually inserting some code. And here is the little chunk of code. Um, all right. Um, so I'm pasting together. Paste is an R function that just says, take a string and tack it together. So a string is just a bunch of characters. And here I have two things that I predefined, something called image root and something called apple one. So image root is the thing I defined early on. So that's just this long string here. Let's copy this. Okay. Uh, and then apple one was this object, which was drawn from my options of apples. So here is my apples. I, I gave you five different apples. And there's this little function called sample um, that says pick one randomly from that this set. Um, so apples one, two, three, four are just randomly drawn from this and they get stored as objects called apple. So way down here, what it's doing is it's pasting together. It's saying go to this, but then tack on this at the end. So whatever apple one was, tack it on. So let's say apple one was, oh, we know what it is. It's a, a red delicious apple, right? So it must have been red delicious.jpg. So what gets inserted here, instead of this, what you get is the combination of this plus reddelicious.jpg. So it would be something like this slash reddelicious.jpg. There you go. So this is the actual URL to this image. And all I've done here is I've just, I've just built it dynamically. I constructed that, that URL and then I stuck it inside um, some HTML code. So this is this part uh, and this part is HTML for inserting an image on a web page. And then anything between these little back ticks is R code. So it's kind of a, a hacky thing that I'm doing here, but I'm, I'm selecting randomly apples. I'm constructing in real time the path to that image on the web, which is something like this, and then inserting it into the survey. So the user, all they see is this. And then when they click the next button, you're gonna you're gonna see an image for whatever Apple II was. So it's another one of these randomly drawn ones. So next page, and it should be hopefully a different Apple. Yeah, I think this one is might be Honeycrisp. I don't know. All right, so that's uh, that's what's going on, and and you can see the the URL to the image if you just say open a new tab. You can see the here it is again. Here's the path to that image. So these images are just stuck on GitHub somewhere, and um, 
because this is a live survey on the web, it's able to just, you know, dynamically generate that that path and then insert the image. So the, the user experience is pretty smooth uh, because it's randomly picking an image every time. And this is the effect of what this code is doing. Um, quick, John, is yeah. it so is it um, not able to pick the same image twice by random? Is that what that replace true is at the end? Replace equals true means you can pick uh, pick from the same five every time. So you could get the same one in a row if you wanted. Uh, OK, so, so that's a could... sample function. OK. If I said replace equals false, then if you picked, like, say, Honeycrisp the first time, then the next time you wouldn't be able to choose Honeycrisp. You'd only be able, you'd only have these left. OK. So um, why do you have four then? Why don't you just have one sampling if it's um, going to be random? Because I, I don't know, I just decided to show four different apples for some reason. Um, <laughs> but in theory, right, to... you could just have it once because it's always random. Yeah. So in fact, you could um, take this and stick it right here and it would work. All right. So what I'm doing here is I'm randomly sampling the apple um, in real time. And then I'm pasting that into the image root. And that's going to get stuck into the web page. So the, I think the only okay. reason I did it this way is because whenever whatever thing you stick for name, whatever's under here for name is what's going to show up in your data later. Ah, um, OK. So it's helpful to know what apples did you see. In this particular case, I said, OK, I'm going to show this person four different apples. So in my data frame column later, it's going to have apple one, two, three, four. So I will know what you saw. And then I'm going to compare that against what you chose to see which one did you think it was. Oh, that's true. The other way, you wouldn't know what you would never know was. what they saw because you would have dynamically generated if you stuck it here. I never knew what you actually saw. Ah, um, okay, good reason. So you have to think carefully um, when you design this. And like I said, I think this platform works really well. Um, it's really good for as a research platform because it's incredibly flexible. You can come up with virtually anything you can think of um, in terms of randomizing stuff and. Um, it actually has other built-in um, features for for automatically randomly randomizing when and how things are shown. There's also this show if column where you can hide things. So you can say, um, <clears throat> let's say I only wanted a particular type of respondent. Like, are you a student? Yes or no. And if you're not, and then I would have a thing that says, you know, is student. And so inside show if I could say, you know, if uh, you know, is student is equal to false or something like that. And then it's, it's only going to show you that one if you're not a student. So you can, you can really get creative. Um, and it is, um, like I said, it's all kind of an open sourced platform. So you're using a Google sheet to design the content of your survey, uh, which again, on, on first glance is kind of, it feels kind of hacky to me, <laughs> but it's really effective because I can look at this and actually know what it's going to, I have a sense for what it's going to look like already. I can, I'm seeing the text right in front of me. Um, I can, I can label exactly what my data frame is going to look like, what variables I'm going to get. So I'm going to have, you know, like a variable called question one for Q1 and I'll have one of these five answers in it. And then for Q2, I'll also have one of these five. Um, so you can really fine tune the way things look and feel. And I haven't even talked about this one over here yet. Class is um, some, there's a lot of built in uh, design features. If you go over to uh, documentation, uh, documentation, there's lots of help uh, on how to do this. It's it, it takes some time to get used to it and learn how to do it. Um, but, there's a bunch of different types of questions you can ask, um, just unlimited number of, of type question types. And then there's, uh, you can also design the survey with a very specific features. Like I wanna hide the label, I wanna make it multiple choice, but I want the questions to be horizontal or vertical. I wanna change the width of the question so that it's not, so it's shorter on this side and longer over here. You can really, really start to tweak and customize the way things look. Um, when you're when you're taking the survey, so that's kind of the main stuff, and that's the end for this survey. Um, 
And, and the reason I, I wanted to demo it is because you can see how and where R code starts to come in. Um, like I said, you don't have to have any R code. If you just want to make a survey and ask people questions, you can just write text, give them you know, responses, and you will get a very nicely organized um, result. Uh, a, 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 a data frame with all the questions, uh, all the answers people gave. Um, but if you want to start throwing in, you know, images and uh, charts and stuff, you can you can get really creative with it that way. I found even doing something as simple as this, as randomizing some images that I'm showing someone, is very hard to do in something like Qualtrics or any of these other platforms. Um, many of those platforms, like SurveyMonkey, they're free the free sort of entry level one um, may not have some of those advanced features, but, um, or if they do, it's just hard to do things that are like randomized. And this is a free and open source platform that makes it pretty easy to do once you just tweak a little bit with your R code. Um, so a few other things I want to show you is what it looks like on the other end. So, you know, let's go back to my, oh, where was my uh, admin page for that survey? Here it is. So my random images demo is, is what this spreadsheet is. I can see everyone's results here. Like here's a bunch of people who've responded. This is mostly me just playing around. But now you can see what they saw, right? So here's the apples, apple one, two, three, four. And you can see how it was a different one for each person, right? Um, all sorts of different apples were, were, were shown. And then I can also see who, what they chose. So they chose four, three, two, five. That's gonna be based on which choice it is, one, two, three, four, five. Um, looks like most people did not answer this. Oh, there they are. So there are some people who answered the which, so I can know which one they saw and then which one they, which one they thought it was, right? That's what I get. Um, so this thing, you can export it from here. You can just say download and I'm gonna save it as a lot of different files, JSON, Excel files, CSV, whatever you want to analyze it. Um, that's one way to get it. The other way is you can actually import it inside R. So there's a there's a library, um, an R library that comes up a package that comes with this. So I want to kind of demo that. Um, you just have to log in. So it's called Library Former. So you have to install that package. Then you have to connect. So I already typed in my password. I'm not going to show it here. Um, but Former Connect, and I'll connect. It says, "Oh, you were already logged in because I was." Uh, and then you can grab stuff. Um, so this was this is from a survey I'm actually working on right now. But there's a thing called former uh, raw results, and you give it a survey name. So let's ignore this and just let's get the results from that that one that I just showed you. Um, let's say survey name is whatever this one was, random images demo. Bop. We'll call this data. So we'll run that over here. Hopefully this works. Yep. Now I have everything I just saw, right? This is exactly what I see here, but in like a single line of code and it's nicely imported. It's a data frame. And again, I can see the Apple types. I can see the questions they answered, um, you know, so you can very quickly start making, uh, making work of what it is you're, you're working on. If you, want to drop out people who maybe didn't respond like to question one, then you can just start filtering stuff out. Um, let's say get rid of anyone who's not a missing value for Q1. So how many did I have? First of all, I have 46 rows. So there's 46 people who took the survey. If I filter it out, whoops, looks like I have to load this other library. Don't worry about some of this stuff. If you're totally new and you're like, I don't know what you're doing right now. This is some tidyverse code. Um, so I'm going to call it, uh, data filtered, right? Let's, let's look at that. How big is this one? Only nine. <laughs> so only nine people actually clicked on responses. So now I, I know a lot more. These are the people who, who answered question one, but even those people, some didn't get all the way to the end. Very few, only looks like a couple people finished all five. Uh, this is again, just because it's a random demo. So, um, you know, working with your data, you don't have to do it this way. You don't have to work inside R. Like I said, you can export it. Maybe you're, you want to work with Excel, just save it as an Excel file and then, hey, open it up. Um, here's my Excel file and you're going to see it this way. Um, oh, I never open Excel on this computer. So here you go. 
but here's all the same information, right? So I, I, this is one of my other things I really love about this platform is the data come in in a very nicely structured way. You have so much control over what it is, uh, uh, how it's going to be structured, because you define it right here. So I, I give it names that are convenient for me, and then um, you know I get convenient responses back. Every time I've worked with other survey platforms, after I export the data, I have to do a ton of work to sort of clean it up and get things in a manageable structure. And I find this to be just a really convenient um, system. So um, that's a quick overview. I think the only other thing I wanna demo is how to make this thing live. So far, I've only sort of showed you testing, right? I, I have my demo page, I can import items. So any changes I make, I can, I can update them by saying, uh, update these items. This is just a warning saying, hey, you might accidentally delete stuff. <laughs> um, okay, so I haven't deleted anything and I can test it and see what it looks like, but that doesn't make it live yet. Um, to make it live, you have to make something called a run. So a survey is a single spreadsheet, right? And you can imagine um, for a lot of cases, this is all you need. You need one simple survey. Um, but there's a lot of times where you might actually need three or four surveys back to back um, if you have a more complex question. Um, so maybe a simple example would be, you just have two languages, right? And so when they get to the first page, it says English or Spanish. And then you have a spreadsheet for the English survey, and then you have the exact same survey uh, for the Spanish survey. And all you had is just someone translated um, what the, the labels, right? Translate all of the text into Spanish. So in that case, you might want to link together several spreadsheets. You might have a spreadsheet that's the, you know, the starting page. Then you have a spreadsheet for each language. So how do you link them together? How do I go from one into the next? Um, and that's being managed with what's called a, a run. Um, so here, actually, here's my random images demo. Here's the run. A run is where you can start putting stuff together. So I'm going to say um, uh, they they structured this kind of like a, um, I think of it like a boom box <laughs> where you have like pause, you know, fast forward, go backwards, um, a stop button, shuffle. And um, this little guy here is called add a survey. And so the first thing I do is say, I'm going to add my survey. Um, and it just puts it somewhere. So here's my survey. And then I can click whatever survey I want. So here's my random images demo. Um, I could put that in here. In this case, I've already done that. It's up here. So random images demo is the survey you're going to go to first. And then at the end, the only thing I have right now is a stop button that says, okay, once you've gotten to the end of this, once you've, once you've gotten down to here, when you hit the next button, it'll go to the end and say, thanks. So the whole, the whole thing ends. But I could also have other things like, you know, maybe they, maybe I want to filter people out, or maybe I, based on the response, I want to ask them something different. Like, if you're a student, I want to ask you not about apples. I want to ask you about pizza toppings. <laughs> so maybe I have my apples, you know, spreadsheet here, and I have a pizza topping spreadsheet over there. And so I would have a, a different survey that says, you know, depending on your answer to the question one, which is, are you a student? I could then filter, so I could have a skip forward where I say, if, um, uh, let's say my survey was called start, I could say start um, is student, which would be something in here called is student. And if that is true, then I will say skip to a new section, you know, skip forward to 10 or something. And, um, and I'm gonna reorder here. So that'll be the first thing I do. If it's a student, skip to skip forward to, I guess, 10. So this number here is just the order that the, the things come in. So I could make this 10, I could make this 20, whatever I want. And if it's false, I could say skip to a different survey where I'm going to ask you about pizza toppings. Um, so you can build and chain together lots of complex surveys with lots of skip logic and stuff like that inside a run. So your surveys are never live. The survey is just the thing that you've designed and you can go see the responses to that survey directly. But the run is what makes it live and something that you're gonna see in the field. So the run, um, once you've built your run, this is what's gonna control whether it's live or not. 
Um, just like I could test the survey, I can also test the run. Um, oh, this is going to break because I put this in here. I don't need this. Let's get rid of this thing. Um, yes, delete it. Um, I can test the survey, and it looks, in this case, exactly the same. It's almost the same, right? Um, but right now, it's on pause. And then there's several levels of how live you want it to be. So you could have it where only people who have some access code can actually get in. Here is only people who have the link can take it. And here it's fully live. Um, so anyone who goes to this URL is going to be able to take the survey. Um, so this is the URL to your actual survey. It's right here. It's usually just whatever the thing name is, .former.org. So if I went there, oh, now I'm actually taking the survey as if I'm a respondent. Um, so I think the difference between like what's a survey and what's a run is one of the most confusing things about the platform. And it took me some time to understand that like I've made my survey live, but like I've designed my survey, but why can't someone take it yet? Um, it's because you have to insert it into a run. Um, but it's designed this way because it, it allows you to have much more complex studies with, um, you can have longitudinal studies, you can have studies where you follow up on people, um, you know, six months later even, and have them uh, come back to the survey and fill out something else. So you can get really creative. And there are some, um, you know, templated runs. Uh, if you're looking to do a diary study, you can import this template and sort of, it'll guide you on, here's, here's how you could build that type of a study. Um, and there's lots of advanced stuff in here. I mean, you can go to town in here. In the settings, you can insert JavaScript, you can change the CSS code. There's a lot of stuff. If you want to tweak the way any particular thing is shown, um, you just change some of the styling or insert some JavaScript. Um, and uh, anyway, lots and lots of fine tuning tweaks. So I feel like this is a, it's kind of a, like a Swiss army knife type tool for designing surveys. You can make things as simple as you want and you can also make them like in wildly complex. Um, it just, you know, depends what you need. And um, in my particular case, the most useful feature is the randomization of, of images and things. A lot of the survey work I do requires me to be able to randomly show people different things. And it's just so easy to do that by using R code to do the randomization and then just show them something based on whatever the R code generated. Um, so this was my, you know, 30 minute version of this talk. The five minute version is uh, here's what it is and here's the extended one. And I might actually link to this YouTube video <laughs> if anyone wants to see more detail. Um, I think that's about it. So I'm going to stop sharing in my screen and then, you know, we can answer any other questions or any thoughts people have. I thought it was really interesting. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, you wouldn't really have to know any R to use it anyway. Like you could That's build a thing. survey without any R and not have to use a tool like Qualtrics, which is very expensive. Yeah. Um, I think at a, at a bare bones entry point, the fact that it's free and open source and it uses these open source tools like Google Sheets um, is a really nice tool for, for you know having a free tool. I think it is it's very powerful in terms of how complex you can get. And again, without any coding really necessary, the, co the fact that you can insert R code and run R code in real time during the survey is just one of those things that makes it uniquely different from anything else I've seen. I, I've never seen a platform that allows you to do that. Um, I didn't go into the weeds on how that all works, but basically there is a free, again, open sourced um, CPU um, it's called open CPU, um, that runs R commands. Um, so that's, what's going on in the background is every time you go to a new page, it, it sends whatever R code it finds off to that. It runs that code and it brings back the result and inserts it into the page. So that's all being done. I didn't have to build a server or pay for anything. All the computing is handled completely open and completely free out somewhere else. And uh, it's just amazing that I don't have to do that. I don't, I don't have to build a server, you know, to get that kind of power. Um, uh, I, I, I keep saying open source too. I should, I should mention that security is also really not an issue. I think uh, you can, you can make it as transparent as you want. So I've been showing how to use Google sheets 
um, to just quickly update my design. But let's say you wanted to keep your Google Sheet hidden. You didn't want anyone to see the exact questions. Maybe there's some sensitive information in there. Um, that's fine. You can build it in Excel and upload an Excel file as well. So it accepts a Google Sheet. It also accepts a, any basically a, a spreadsheet format. You can design it that way and upload that as an individual file. And that way, no one will ever see the, the questions that you're, um, that you're showing unless the people who, you know, who took the survey. And of course the data themselves are only visible on the dashboard where you have to log in. And so um, you can log in and access the data, or like I said, with I demoed with R, you can use their package, which again requires a, a username and password. So um, it's pretty secure for, um, you know, keeping any sensitive information that people are, you know, giving you. It's all uh, compliant with most of the typical security you know, things that we need to think about. Well, and the other thing, since it's a Google sh sheet that you were using, um, I think it was last semester I gave the talk on how to use Google sheet web scraping tools to bring in data. And then you could just pass those then as items. So if you wanted to bring live data into your survey, you could bring live data in through like a JSON script or through XML to fill in cells that would be parts of questions within your survey or parts of responses. Yeah, or you could do it through R. I mean, you could, yeah. that's what's really clever about this thing is um, I could show someone, I mean, I could imagine having questions about, let's say something happening right now, like stock prices, something that's continuously changing, right? I could write an R script that says, go, go fetch the last, 10 minutes of whatever the stock price is from somewhere, I don't know, some website, um, and then display that to the user. And so now whoever is taking the survey, they're gonna be looking at a live feed of whatever, you know, whatever they're looking at. So you can do that with our code. You could also do it, like you said, I think, I think possibly through uh, some kind of script on the spreadsheet side, but um, wait, no, no, that won't work because that the spreadsheet is sort of a static document that, that when you wanna update that, it has to, you have to go in and click and say, Up, update my spreadsheet items. Ah, uh, okay. So, so it yeah, would have you would to do be, it with the R. I would have to yeah. do it with R. But That's you could not a problem have, either. That's not But difficult. it's not a problem. <laughs> so again, um, you can get very creative with what it is uh, you're trying to do. Um, anything that requires like an interactive experience or a unique experience where every person is seeing something uniquely different or random, um, this is a really good platform for that. And it's free, which is always oh, the best. <laughs> <laughs> Given how much we pay for Qualtrics and stuff. I pay a lot for Qualtrics. And in fact, I have a, a, a an additional feature on, on Qualtrics for doing this type of conjoint surveys that I that I run. And I'm not using it anymore now. I'm, I'm finding I can do more with this um, and, and do, a, I think, a better job with the the way that the user experience. I think it's easier to customize and make it look really nice. Um, again, it, it's sort of like you you get out what you put in. If you spend enough time to figure out how all the stuff works, you can get a really cool survey. Um, the nice thing about Qualtrics and stuff is it's all you know click and drag. So you can, uh, the designer side is a little easier to work with. But I think if you spend enough time playing around with with this platform, you'll you'll figure it out. Um, you do have to request an account, though. You can't just immediately sign up. When you, when you sign up, um, you have to send an email that says, hey, this is who I am, and this is what I'm doing, and, um, and then they will approve it. So I think I had to wait a day or so when I initially signed up. Um, it's uh, the folks I mentioned in that video, they run the whole thing, and it's being run off in Europe somewhere. So there is a server. I think it's in Belgium. I don't know <laughs> where all this is being hosted. Um, so you, you got to sometimes wait a day because they might be asleep when you sign up and uh, they might, it might take some time. Any other questions or ideas? If not, I'm going to stop the recording. Hey, so hey John, this is Raymond. I had... Oh, hey, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. I just had a quick question. You know, uh, I was looking at the JavaScript part. Um, is yeah. Do you have to like in traditional HTML 
HTML, do you have to put it like the, the tags before that, or can you just insert the JavaScript in there and then it automatically accepts anything you put in there? Or is there like a structure you have to put? Oh, let's, let's see. I will show you one because, so I use this, let me demo this, uh, screen share again. Okay. I just logged into a different account, which is my account for teaching. So I have one for my research and I have another one for the classroom because I run quizzes. I run a bunch of quizzes for my classes through this platform. And it's worked really well actually in the COVID world because I can't be there in person to do paper quizzes. So I can randomize it. So I have quizzes where every single student sees a completely different quiz. It'll be like five questions and they're all being randomly done. So um, anyway, here's a quiz from last year and here was some JavaScript. So here's what my JavaScript looked like in this case, um, right? And this was a timer. All this thing does is it generates a timer for 300 seconds. So it was a five minute quiz. And um, so when you, when you see the quiz, it looks uh, like this. And thank the former monkey. I'm not gonna cheat, start my quiz. And then you'll see a timer up here that will pop up. And here you go. See, it's counting down. So that is not a built-in feature, right? There is no timer feature, but I just found it by Googling around like, hey, if I can um, throw in this little JavaScript, it will work. Um, so that's an example of what you know it might look like. And same, I think for CSS, I don't think you have to put like, so here's a, a little, a single CSS thing I, I tweak. I just changed the width of something. Um, so you don't have to put it inside like style. You just insert it directly here. It works. Okay. Great. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It seems like it has endless options that you could come up with. If you can change, if you can do things with Java, then it really is endless. All the things you can do. Yeah. There's a lot of studies up right now um you can actually see on their homepage every single study that's live um, um and there's like thousands <laughs> and like i said in that little talk i showed a chart at the end i think there's over a million people who have like used this thing uh who've, who've clicked on and filled out a survey using former so um it's been around i think about five or six years and it, it's really grown i think as a platform the other thing is that the entire platform you're seeing, this whole admin page and all of this is being hosted on a server that is also completely open sourced. So you could build your own former server locally if you really wanted to. You, you can download all this stuff. If you have a machine somewhere, you can put this on there. You can build your own site called, you know, myformer.com or whatever, or John Helveston former, <laughs> takejohnsurveys.com and have this back end and everything you know there um hosted live locally if you didn't want to go through this one this is just the one that is uh, available to the public i think most people who use this are researchers they're pretty involved researchers because they've taken the time to like learn how to like write code and do all this stuff um and I, I think it's a lot of social science folks, um, psychologists, people who are running these complex experiments where they want to show people random stuff. And, um, but I mean, yeah, you, you can do just about anything with it. Anyway, that's time. So should I stop? Yeah, you Maybe can stop the stop. recording. <laughs>